when was it, how long ago was it when uh, Big Hero 6 had its first germination, the seed uh, sprouted? Where, how did that happen? <laughs> from, from our standpoint, uh, it was about three and a half years ago. Three and a half years. So you just kind of whipped this together. Okay. All right. <laughs> for animation, animation, that is. For animation, that, together, that's, a, that's a pretty good pace for animation. But um, yeah, I was finishing up Winnie the Pooh and uh, started talking to John uh, last year about what my next project would be. And he just, he really encourages us to follow our passions. Mm -hmm. Because if we're not passionate about it, there's no way an audience is going to be passionate about it. And it has to come from the director. It has to be, we're a filmmaker driven studio. It has to come from the filmmaker. Um, and so I just looked into my childhood. What was I in love with? Uh, Disney Animation and Marvel Comics. And, and we had just, uh, I think the company had just purchased Marvel not that long before that. Um, and so I just pitched that idea to John. What if we took uh, something of Marvel's and brought it over here and, and just got inspired by one of their ideas and, and crafted something here? And he got super excited and he's like, go find something. Mm -hmm. And so I just uh, did some research and, and came across Big Hero 6. Well, I, I and, and let me just throw in. Sure. Um, Don went and did some exploration, came back with this idea, and he he pitched an outline about three and a half years ago um, that really emphasized that this is really a story about loss, and and he told this really sort of a skeleton pitch uh, about a boy who loses his older brother, who's left with his older brother's creation, and uh, and the, and this 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 creation Baymax is going to help him sort of deal with the loss and, and recover from the loss and. And we were also moved by, by that pitch that everybody was on board from that, that moment forward. Mm -hmm. And of course, he was too young to remember the loss of his parents, but, but he's also at a loss there, too, to not really have that traditional uh, structure. So. Yeah, Tadashi really is his yeah. sort of lifeline in the world, yeah. It's, but it's interesting because I think there's a big thematic of family going through here, and obviously mm -hmm. the brother relationship is core to the, actually the Baymax and, mm -hmm. and hero relationship. But it's also the friends, how friends transcend into family is a, is a big theme that we were working here. But you also kind of went against, in, the, in this film, against the whole idea of superhero movies, the villain just kind of always either dies or is really uh, horribly, uh, comes to a horrible end here. Right, so you're, right. you, you, he gets arrested, but, but there's a morality here that's atypical. And yeah, where yeah. Where did that come from? Well, I mean, in a... It, Are you a softy at heart? I'm a, I'm a giant softy at heart. For, I kept trying sure. to kill him, but yeah. Donnie wouldn't let me. No, I mean, ultimately, maybe this is going too deep a dive, but ultimately to me, you know, Callahan is healed by hero mm -hmm. and by hero sacrifice. Well, and again, the, 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 the theme you have going is from another angle, his daughter is still alive. Exactly. So, so. Exactly. And, and what... what uh, you know, it, it, what a choice by Hero to, after all he's been through, to actually risk life and limb to go after this guy's daughter. And to me, that was the, the ultimate um, uh, sort of aspect of what makes a hero a hero. And it echoes, mm -hmm. obviously, Tadashi, the selflessness of Tadashi running in that building. And so, uh, yeah, ultimately, I feel like Hero actually healed uh, Callahan. So the thing about animation that always amazes me is that you basically, every, every second is a complete blank frame that you have to create every single nine million decision yes. piece. You know, you don't, oh, we're you, so tired. You, well, <laughs> I mean, you did have a little bit of influence by going with Sanford, but even, you even created your own city, you know, and, you, and the, the design of that and, the, and what that world was and, and all your heroes, you're, you were totally uh, uh, redeveloping. So, what was the center idea or the center of this movie that you kept that kept you because to me you made so many right choices how do you keep centered so that you're not going off on some other movie or with so many collaborators how do you keep from having somebody come in with a great idea that really ends up being wrong hmm. well first I just want to say that you make a very good point that in animation uh, nothing is you get nothing for free Every crack in the sidewalk, everything that's in there is a choice that somebody made and somebody had to design that thing and light that thing. And, and so it's, we're always on a quest for spontaneity and we're always looking for spontaneity from our actors and, and, and most we try to get it in the performance. Um, as far as like the central thing, the thing that we kept going back to, because that's a big question for us in the story room. We'll spend years working on the movie, coming up with iteration after iteration and questioning our assumptions and making the story better. Um, and we're, al we're always going back to what's it really about? What's it really about? And we knew it was a story about loss. That was central to, to the, um, the, the, the concept. And, but we needed to say something about that. And, um, and so we kept circling around the idea that when you lose somebody uh, that, that you're close to, they're not really gone. 
uh, completely. They can live on through you and, and affect the choices that you make. And, and when, you, when, you, when you accept that idea, it can be very cathartic. And it was for me in, in, my, in my life. Um, and that's one of those things where uh, you hear it a lot when you lose somebody. You hear that sentiment. Um, and there's, I think, a danger sometimes that, that it can come off trite. Um, but I think that one thing that, is, that movies can be great at is reminding people that, that there is something to these simple truths. And they can be very important. Mm -hmm. And they can be very cathartic. And, uh, and so that's something that we kept circling around uh, as we made this movie. And so we were, yes, we were making this superhero film and with you know, big action scenes and comedy and all that stuff. We wanted it to be a really fun movie. But we knew if it didn't have a center, if it wasn't about something, it would all be meaningless and all be you know, just disposable. And uh, so we kept going back to that. And you know, we do a lot of research in these. And one of the big uh, aspects that we w w delved into was loss. And we actually talked to several psychologists and social workers who who deal primarily with teenage loss. And uh, it was so informative and so helpful in terms of building that emotional core, uh, which is, I'm so, uh, I'm, I'm so proud of that in this film, that it has this huge heart. Yeah, and also just to go back to your question too about like, uh, you know, how do you stop somebody if they, or not stop somebody, but what do you do if somebody comes in and has an idea? Um, we never stop them. And, and I think our process uh, allows for that. And it allows for us to be wrong. And, uh, and, and test some theories and try things out because you know, that during that three and a half years, we're constantly writing and storyboarding the movie and presenting it to our colleagues and, um, and John Laster, and then we talk about it afterwards. So we're constantly looking at things and trying out ideas and, and again, to try and get to that center. What is the, and, and hone everything down so that it's about that thing. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we, we leave a lot of stuff on our, uh, I guess, kind of the cutting room floor. I mean, it's basically storyboards, but uh, there's a, you know, we try out a lot of ideas to get to that, you know, to that honed down version of a film. I, I think you're getting to something really important um, as far as how we make movies. Uh, as directors, we're asked to have strong convictions. We have to know what the movie is about. We have to be able to express that. Um, and uh, we have to have strong opinions. Uh, at the same time, we have to foster a collaborative atmosphere where people feel free uh, volunteering their points of view and disagreeing with us. And, and we find that in that sort of, in that, in that nest of conflicting opinions comes great things. And uh, so we always encourage that. And, and it's, our, our story room is very lively. Uh, and it's full of people who have the strength of their convictions. And, and I think that as directors, we benefit from that. And, um, and so, so I think that, that that speaks to sort of how we make our films and, and I think why we've had so much success under John Lasseter.